Hello everybody, welcome back to Life Stories. My name is Trent, and as usual, I hope you guys are all doing great. Today, we got some stories coming at you from Reddit slash I Don't Work Here Lady. So, without further ado, let's get started. Our first story is titled, Karen Pulls a Reversal. This is not my story, but one from my fiance. It happened early today. Couldn't think of a better sub to put this on, so feel free to let me know if it's too horribly misplaced. She was at the Walmart in our town doing some shopping. I'm not a big fan of heading into stores right now, and it's never bothered her. I'm way more nervous about the Rona, sue me. On her way in, she got stopped at the door. This isn't particularly odd, given the current state of things. The policy for this Walmart, or all of them, I'm not sure is that not too many people should be in a store at a time. And that makes perfect sense. Most people, customers and employees alike, are wearing their face masks and gloves, so generally, the environment seems quite clean. After waiting for only a few moments, she was let in. The store was slightly crowded, despite the attempts of keeping a low population. But my wife had decided that there was one item she wanted more than anything, anything else. Sugar-free pudding. Not for me, that stuff makes my stomach turn. Wading through the less crowded aisles, she made her way into what she thought was the pudding aisle, but alas, a horrific lack of glucoseless, savory soft sweets were simply absent. So, only slightly deterred, the rest of the grocery shopping took place. Detergent, paper towels, hot pockets, mmm, and food in general came. For a while, after getting literally all the other groceries, she tried to find another aisle for pudding. One that didn't exist, so she made her way back to where she had started this journey. And there she was, atop a pedestal in front of all that delicious, desirable pudding. Karen. She was tall, blonde hair pulled back into a ponytail. She seemed older, not the typical age of a Karen, but one could be forgiven for a slight moment of mistaken assumption that she was an employee. She stood atop a metal stepping ladder that had a cart attached to the front with myriad boxes of stock, waiting to be introduced to their shelves. However, something caught my fiancé's eye. The boxes were full of baking supplies, flour, baking soda, the whole nine yards, all of which belonged on the other side of the store. This, this cart and ladder combo wasn't even supposed to be in this aisle, and there was no other employee in uniform nearby so she clearly didn't work at the store. Unless Walmart had introduced some kind of plain clothes division. She had her ungloved hands reaching all the way back into a shelf of probiotics, a shelf that, given the woman's height, the stepladder wasn't technically needed. She even had her face only a few inches away from the product without a mask on, trying to read whatever she thought was on those bottles. My fiancé, ever the non-confrontational woman she is, kept her mouth shut and simply watched the woman take the probiotics out, look at them, put one on the stocking cart, and put every other one back, and continue to fondle the probiotics like she was coming onto them. And then, the horrifying moment struck. Her eyes searched around and landed on my fiancé. I don't work here, she scoffed dismissively, and then turned back to continue her ministrations which left my fiancé baffled, trying her best not to look like she needed anything. She didn't mind waiting for whatever this Karen was up to, as the pudding she wanted so desperately was going to be there by the time she was done getting to know the bottles of probiotics. After another minute or so of waiting, the woman turned again and with a loud huff, knowing the pesky nervous shopper was still standing there awkwardly, Do you need something? I don't work here. My fiancé finally squeaked out a little, I, I don't mind waiting, which dragged another sigh out of the woman. <sighs> Unbelievable. If you have a problem, learn to ask someone who works here next time. She stomped, stomped, stomped her feet down the three metal steps onto the floor of the aisle and pushed her cart forward with such a ferocity that the orange aisle marker, if you frequent the store, you certainly know, fell to the ground with a clap. The fall had been enough to bust the corner off of the sign, but the Karen had her sights locked not on the broken property, the carnage laying at her feet, but instead at my fiancé. With the speed and fear of a mouse, my fiancé finally obtained that half-liquid, half-solid gold she had been wanting so desperately, the sugar-free pudding. Like she was holding the holy grail and a boulder was about to roll her over, my fiancé dipped out of the aisle, 
stepping over the broken piece of sign in the process and fled the scene. Before she could get too far, she heard the last of the woman's whinging, more maskless huffing and puffing, along with another set of stomp stomp stomps to surely start fondling the probiotics once again. But oh no, no 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 no, this isn't where it ends, as my fiancé was at the self-checkout, slowly bagging her groceries to make sure she had as few bags as possible, another horrid incident with this woman began. Now, to set the stage, let me be frank. My wife has a peculiar way of handling herself in public. She always had her head down, fiddling with a fidget cube in one hand and stacking groceries with the other. To the untrained eye, she'd look far less independent than she really is. As the Karen wound up finally deciding what probiotic she wanted, she came around the self-checking area. With only that single bottle, whatever half-liquid, half-solid gold she had, good for her. Now, the self-checkout lines have a generally short length, evenly spread out across most of the little area that they're in, with only one person to take care of any malfunctions or bagging errors, short-staffed, likely. The Karen, bottle in hand, upon seeing my fiancé once again, practically beelined to the assistant. My fiancé has a massive baby face issue going on, so the next thing she heard wasn't surprising. Excuse me, this little kid needs someone to help them. Do you know that I had to help her in the back because you weren't staffed enough? I should be getting paid for this at this point. She'd loudly protested, a hair flip going along with her tirade. Oh, uh... The assistant, clearly caught off guard, asked, Is that your daughter? Another scoff. No, if she was, I would be even more upset how little help you have been here. So, do you mind? Before the assistant could come and help my socially inept fiancé, she managed to let out a, Uh, sorry, I don't need any help, before practically breaking the joystick off her cube in a mortified moment of fidgeting. Are you sure? The Karen roared out, less like a lion and more like a boar. Because you sure took plenty of time standing there and waiting for me to help you. Do I look like an employee here, hmm? She gestured to the floral, short-sleeved shirt she was wearing. At this point, the self-checkout assistant seemed to somewhat understand what was going on and tried to redirect the wild animal's rage. Ma'am, if you'd like, I can talk to my supervisor about getting some coupons for your help. Tactful. Upon hearing that she'd finally been paid for all the work she did, she let out one final, relaxing sigh. Yes, that'd be wonderful. She folded her arms, bottle of probiotics sloshing again in her hands. Gosh, I'm so sorry. All this, all this virus stuff just has me so worried right now. She emphasized this with a sniffle, rubbing her nose against the side of her hand. Yeah, real worried. Regardless of whether or not Karen got her precious coupons, my poor wife-to-be decided that she didn't want to stick around for the festivities. Quickly finishing up her bagging, and not nearly as compact as she'd like, she made her way out of the store after paying the terminal. In fact, the fact that she had three bags filled up two-thirds, and not two fully filled bags is what she was most upset about upon getting home, really puts things into perspective. This is a super weird one. It's like someone took Entitled Parents and I Don't Work Here Lady and threw it in a gene splicer and it came out as some sort of disgusting, sugar-free, pudding-flavored eldritch abomination. Ugh. Moving along, our next story is titled, Well, I used to work here 15 years ago. I had myself an inadvertent Sheldon Cooper moment at Home Depot today. For reference, I did used to work there back in 2005. I needed a Swazol for some home demolition work, and after waiting four hours after ordering online with no pickup ready message, cancelled and went in person. I was wearing my work polo, which is grey with black sleeves and white shoulders, blue jeans and a black cloth mask with a big evil toothy grin across the front. The place was busy, but no line. The home tool section was packed though. I found my tool, then started going through the blades to find what I needed. Next to me were two confused women who had no idea what to get. They turned to me and asked if the blades they chose were any good. I took a moment to explain the difference in quality between bimetal and carbide blades, and how you get what you pay for in quality. They thanked me profusely and left. 
I turned around, and someone else immediately started asking about tooth count and job requirements. I helped them pick out some pruning blades, and they also thanked me. I turned back the other way to leave, only to hear, Can you tell me where I can find- Wait, you don't work here. And they walked away quickly. I really don't mind helping for a moment, especially since everyone was polite. They were busy enough that I could easily have stood there for half an hour straight. If all Home Depots are that busy, I'm buying stock. Not gonna lie, I had to do a triple take on the word Swazal. I swear that sounds like some kind of Dr. Seuss creature. And with that short one out of the way, ladies and gentlemen, we are all out of time for today. As usual, I want to thank you so much for tuning in to Life Stories. My name is Trent. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more Reddit content coming your way. And I hope to see you guys soon.